If you've been part of my Freelance Road Trip Business School or you've listened to the podcast for a while, you're most likely aware that I champion a separation of your business assets and your personal assets. And this is not simply a separation of your business and personal checking accounts, but it's a separation informing a legal business structure that separates your personal and business assets. And I'm referring to forming an LLC or corporation in contrast to operating as a sole proprietor. In forming an LLC or a corporation, there has been a degree of personal privacy invoked. But things have taken an interesting turn, government-wise, and my sense of discernment is on high alert about this new requirement that's about to be implemented on the federal level in the United States. And that's what this episode of the Freelance Road Trip Podcast is all about. Welcome to the Freelance Road Trip Podcast. We're located at the intersection of inspired creativity and common business sense. And this is the show where designers, illustrators, and other creative preneurs like you get answers to business questions such as pricing, writing contracts, finding clients, government reporting, promoting your work, managing your time, building your brand, and staying inspired. We talk about everything they don't teach you in design school, but should if you want to build a career as an independent creative. I'm your host, Alvalin Lundgren, and founder of Freelance Road Trip and also of Alvalin Creative. I'm an independent brand designer, illustrator, and educator. I've been freelancing for over three decades. And based on my experience and what I've learned, I teach freelancers and entrepreneurs the mindset, how-tos, and street smarts to build a thriving creative business. And my goal is to help you overcome the things you're struggling with, find permanent solutions so you can accelerate your creative and material growth. And I also want to keep you informed with accurate and updated information and insights on the changing landscape of freelancing. Again, welcome to the show. You can find the show notes and links, and links will be important for this episode over at freelanceroadtrip.com slash show 126. That's show 126. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Freelance Road Trip and also at Alvalin Creative, and on X, formerly Twitter, at Freelance Trip. If you're interested in the full-on 90-day business school program, go to FreelanceRoadTrip.com. So the title of this podcast episode is Financial Crimes and Freelancers. So I do advocate for forming an LLC, a single-member LLC, with your Secretary of State or a corporation. Most freelancers start out as sole proprietors, and it's perfectly okay to continue as a sole proprietor for the length of your career. There are specific advantages, though, to forming an LLC or a corporation, and they are not just for business tax filing, but they create a separation from your business so that your personal assets are not involved if your business is If somebody brings a lawsuit against you or your business, if a client decides that a lawsuit is the right course of action to take, the LLC or the corporation will stand in front of you personally. So that's basically one of the huge advantages to forming an LLC or an S-Corp. Because of that separation, as I mentioned in the intro, there is a degree of privacy, of personal privacy and protection of that privacy that has been in place. That, from what I'm seeing, is going to be changing because of a new piece of legislation that takes effect on January 1st of 2024. And it's going to affect all LLCs, and corporations of less than 20 employees, from my understanding. This is called the Corporate Transparency Act. It's a new reporting requirement where you're reporting yourself, your personal information as the owner of your business to the federal government. So if you're running as an LLC or an S-Corp 
or a regular corporation, you get to participate in yet another database, a government database. There's no money involved. There does not appear to be a filing fee to do this, but it seems to be all about money since the Corporate Transparency Act is overseen by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network of the Department of the Treasury. The thing that's interesting about this is that there's not a lot of reporting being done about the regulation, although it's a serious thing. I'll let you discern that for yourself, but just know that th this is not a game. It's a serious thing, and there are penalties involved if you don't comply. This reporting, this transparency filing, is not related to taxes in any way. The IRS is a different agency of the government, but you're required to report your information to this federal database. The new reporting requirements, as I said, become effective January 1st, 2024, and it's a business filing, not a tax filing. This database is newly formed and is maintained by, as I said, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. It will be available to law enforcement agencies in the United States and internationally. It's not meant to be a public database. The data will be used to monitor business activities in order to reduce business-related and financial crimes. That's the idea. If we're talking about financial crimes and business crimes, that's a money issue. So they're going to be looking at money, even though there's no filing fee. It is about money and money being hidden for tax purposes. I did some research to discover if this is the result of an agency ruling or a piece of legislation and found out that it is indeed legislation. The bill was HR, House of Representatives, number 6395, known as the Corporate Transparency Act. Because Congress is suspicious why anyone would want to freelance if not for nefarious purposes. So all small businesses and micro-businesses like freelancers seem to be under this scrutiny. So I'm going to read this to you out of the actual bill. It is the sense of Congress that, one, more than two million corporations and limited liability companies are being formed under the laws of the states each year. Two, most or all states do not require information about the beneficial owners of the corporations, limited liability companies, or other similar entities formed under the laws of the state. Three, malign actors seek to conceal their ownership of corporations, limited liability companies, or other similar entities in the United States to facilitate illicit activity, including money laundering, the financing of terrorism, proliferation financing, serious tax fraud, human and drug trafficking, counterfeiting, piracy, securities fraud, financial fraud, and acts of foreign corruption, harming the national security interests of the United States and allies of the United States. Four, money launderers and others involved in commercial activity intentionally conduct transactions through corporate structures in order to evade detection, and may layer such structures, much like Russian nesting matryoshka dolls, across various secretive jurisdictions that, each time an investigator obtains ownership records for a domestic or foreign entity, the newly identified entity is yet another corporate entity, necessitating a repeat of the same process. Federal legislation providing for the collection of beneficial ownership information for corporations, limited liability companies, or other similar entities formed under the laws of the states is needed to a. set a clear federal standard for incorporation practices, b. protect vital United States national security interests, c. protect interstate and foreign commerce, D. Better enable critical national security, intelligence, and law enforcement efforts to counter money laundering, the financing of terrorism, and other illicit activity. And E. Bring the United States into compliance with international anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism standards. 6. Beneficial ownership information collected under the amendments made by this title is sensitive information and will be directly available only to authorized government authorities subject to effective safeguards and controls, and it goes on. You can read the bill in full and download the PDF. I'll put that link in the show notes. 
but it's at fincen.gov, F-I-N-C-E-N.gov. If you're already operating as an LLC or S-Corp, you have a full 12 months to comply with this requirement. If you're planning to form an LLC or S-Corp, then you'll have 90 days from the date of formation to report your information to the feds. If there are any changes to your information, such as your driver's license, name, your number, business license, anything like that, that has to be reported within 30 days of the change. The information that you're required to provide to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network include your full legal name, your date of birth, your current residential street address, a passport state identification or driver's license number, and an image of the passport state identification or driver's license. So those five things, your full legal name, birth date, current home street address, official identification, and an image of the official identification. So the government wants to be able to track and monitor who owns what businesses. They can't really do that at this point under this legislation with sole proprietors because sole proprietors don't have to file with the Secretary of State. If you are not thrilled with this piece of legislation and you have an LLC or an S-Corp and you decide that the best option for you is to dissolve that, basically you need to do that before January 1st of 2024. So at the recording of this podcast, that's just a few days away. So this beneficial ownership, it's basically looking at who is the person, the human being, who is benefiting by owning the business. And you are a beneficial owner of your freelance business. There are exemptions, but being an independent contractor, a freelancer, is not an exempt category. So the CTA, the Corporate Transparency Act Beneficial Ownership Filing, is mandatory for freelance businesses. And fines for noncompliance are going to be huge, especially if you're an independent business owner. A maximum of $10,000 per violation and up to 24 months in prison. So these are significant. One thing in my research that I think is also something to keep in mind is that scammers are already using this CTA, this Corporate Transparency Act, to take advantage of unsuspecting business owners. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Network website carries this warning above the fold on its homepage. And I'll just read it to you. FinCEN, I guess that's how you're pronouncing it, has been notified of recent fraudulent attempts to solicit information from individuals and entities who may be subject to reporting requirements under the Corporate Transparency Act. The fraudulent correspondence may be titled Important Compliance Notice and asks the recipient to click on a URL or to scan a QR code. Those emails or letters are fraudulent. FinCEN does not send unsolicited requests. Please do not respond to these fraudulent messages or click on any links or scan any QR codes within them. You can read this notice for yourself at FinCEN.gov. On that same website, you can find information about the beneficial ownership information reporting requirements. That's a mouthful. And they even have a newsletter you can subscribe to. So you are the beneficial owner of your business. You have substantial control over your business activities. You own at least 25% of your business. You reap substantial economic benefits from the business assets and operations. The point of this legislation and this new requirement is to disclose the personal information of beneficial owners. For point of reference, and I think this is significant to understand, that President Number 45 vetoed this legislation in 2020. It was a House of Representatives bill that was passed by the House at that time, but the Senate voted on January 1st, 2021 to override his veto. And so it went into law. It goes into effect this coming January, three years later, and it is both a Senate and a House, it's a whole Congress alignment 
because of the Senate override. So every corporation and LLC, unless it's specifically exempted, that's formed in any state or tribe, must report their beneficial owner information to the federal government. Businesses with more than 20 employees are exempt. And there are a number of other exemptions, including nonprofit organizations and so forth. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Network is studying issues concerning beneficial ownership, so we can expect things to change. Perhaps there's more exemptions, or there may be a filing fee in the future. Who knows? And this is my opinion, but with everything else this current administration is doing through the NLRB, that's the National Labor Relations Board, and the attempted legislation in the form of the PRO Act to discourage freelancing and independent contracting, this is one more thing that isn't helping small entrepreneurs and micro-businesses. It's targeting small business owners on the basis of supposed or suspected financial crimes, that we are, as freelancers, somehow more likely to evade paying taxes. It increases the burden on businesses, especially multi-member LLCs and corporations that have multiple owners, and especially micro-businesses and freelancers. And while it's meant to dissuade money laundering and the financing of terrorist activities, I mean, do you really think the Terries are going to file under this requirement? But it's another imposition on our right to privacy and related protections, and it adds more control to the federal government over the individual. I've linked the Financial Crimes Enforcement website and other information in the show notes at freelanceroadtrip.com slash show126, and I recommend you click on those links and become familiar with the FinCEN website. And I recommend this to you because it's part of the business mindset that we freelancers, we freelance creatives need to assume. As owners of our creative businesses, we're responsible to know what's going on, how things are changing, what requirements we need to abide by, and even to step in and influence those requirements. In order to influence, we need to know what's going on. It's been recommended that you speak with your tax attorney or CPA, whoever mentors or guides you in the financial aspects of your business. And my purpose in sharing this with you is basically to educate you and make you aware I'm not advising you to do anything other than check out the website, but what you do with that is entirely up to you and I'm not responsible for any outcomes or any of the decisions that you make based on this information. So that's my legal disclaimer. Again, check with your financial and tax professional and direct your questions there. I appreciate you listening and downloading and subscribing to this podcast. This is the Freelance Road Trip Podcast, the intersection of inspired creativity and common business sense to help you accelerate your freelance business. And it's where you get the street smarts they don't teach you in design school. Once again, the show notes are at freelanceroadtrip.com slash show126. And hey, if you're a creative and you're a freelancer and you want to know how to build your freelance business the right way without having to learn the hard way, then you should want to be part of my online freelance road trip business school program. The next cohort begins in January. You have two options when you register. It's basically a self-study or a self-study with a cohort. To be notified, go to freelanceroadtrip.com slash newsletter and join the mailing list, because everything is funneled through the mailing list. The program is designed to complete in three months, but you have a full 12 months access, including the on-demand video library, group coaching and hot seat opportunities, and roundtable conversations. Enrollment opens in early January. The program begins in the middle of January and officially runs for 12 weeks or three months. You'll get assignments, worksheets, and resources you can use right away to launch or tune up your freelance business. You can take the course at your own pace, but if you enroll for the premium level, you have the opportunity for the coaching sessions. Space is limited for the premium version. I only work with 12 people at a time, so it is a cohort. But if you're a self-paced type of person, you have access to the trainings and coursework 
and they provide all you need to launch and grow your creative business. And this is the only business program for freelancers that I know of that is comprehensive. It's not just about marketing or it's not just about branding. It covers all aspects of building a freelance business and it takes the pain away from you because you're learning from me, someone who has experienced all the roadblocks and potholes and detours and figured out how to make it work. And I've bundled all of that together and I'm offering it to you. If you need a business coach, if you believe that you will be helped with this program, by all means, check it out, freelanceroadtrip.com, and apply for the cohort. I'm Alva Lynn Lundgren. Thanks again for listening. May you prosper in all things and be in health as your soul prospers. And I'll see you on the road. <music>